Hello, this is Celso Battaglia on a Sunday and I uh, received a few questions regarding um, the, the, the sheet, the energy sheet I sent to the class and I, and I would like to outline the solutions of all of it. So, so let's do that. So the first one, you have this block, has an initial velocity is given. Um, okay. The initial velocity is given and the final velocity is given. You have the distance covered and has the time. So this condition allows you to get acceleration if you wanna. Um, and then since you have acceleration, you can play around with the forces and then you can find the friction and then you can subtract the gravity and then you can find uh, the work of all possible forces. So see, since you wanna find the work done by gravity, um, the only thing you need to remember is that work done by gravity is equal to mg times vertical displacement. That's all. That's all. And since the object is going from way above to the down below level, then your vertical displacement is a positive number given by d, in this case, d sine of 40. That's the only thing you do. So make sure you plug your quantities with uh, international system units. So um, your, your mass is 8 kilograms, uh, your g is 9.8 meters per square second, and your del y is a positive number times um, d, which is given 1.6 meters sine of no, 1.6666 sine of 40, 40. And, and this is in joules and then the problem is done. A more complicated and tiresome approach, but you could you could do just to check the numbers, is that you know that the total work, the work of all forces is equal to the change in kinetic energy so you have the change in kinetic energy because the two speeds are given, so final and initial, and the work done by all forces is the work done by normal force, which is zero, plus the work done by gravity, which you want to find, plus the work done by friction, which is a negative work. And the work done by friction, then you have to calculate, it's equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal, which is mg cosine theta, and then you have to use all this information given here to access your coefficient. So this is a little bit more complicated, but you can do it. So you have a 2 gram speed slides along a frictionless wire, uh, point A, the bead is moving to the right, but with negligible speed, so you, you, want, you want you to assume speed zero. Um, what is the potential energy at point A? So if you take point A, B, and C, so what are the energy associated with them? So we can always think about kinetic potential energy, the gravitational one, and there are no springs, so that's pretty much it. And then you have the sum of all of that, right? So at point A, since kinetic energy is set, the bit goes negligible speed, so then it's zero. At B, is half. Make sure you have the mass in proper units. Oops, half to 10 to minus 3 kilograms times uh, the velocity at point B squared. And at point C, and I'm doing the whole thing here, uh, half times m, negative 3 times this c squared. Gravitational potential energy at A is mass, mgh, vertical displacement, and here h, 100 centim centimeters, please plug it in the proper units. So it should be 2, times 10 to minus 3, times g, 9.8, times 1. At b, 0, and at c is the same, a mass, times g, times 0.8 meters, 0.8 meters. 
So when you sum these quantities, they should have the same value because energy is conserved. And then you can find everything you want to find there. Okay. Uh, in the figure, you have a four kilograms ball. Looks like the pendulum, pendulum we did in class, and some of you did. Uh, end of 1.6 ropes, fix at point O. The ball is held at point A. Um, the ball moves through three quarters of a cycle, circle with no friction and arrives at B. Okay, with the rope barely under tension at B. So basically it says that when it gets at B, if you, if you do a free body diagram on it, there is only gravity since the tension is gone. The word, the word barely here tells it all. Tells us all. What is it? Now I lost it. Downward, down. The ball moves to three quarters circle with no friction at the with rope barely under tension. So the initial velocity of the ball at A is closest to what? Well, um, so let's see what's being given. So we have a uh, four kilograms ball, uh, the length is 1.6 meters, and fix point O, that's the center of rotation. And remember, when you think about, um, when you think about uh, centripetal uh, rotation, when there is rotation, there is centripetal, centripetal forces, right? Um, the ball moves through quarter of cycle and what is the initial velocity of point A. So we can do a conservation of energy problem as well and then you go well point A let me erase this diagram here. I don't need it now. I will bring it later. So I have my energies I have my point A I have my point B energies if this is a vertical, right? This is a vertical thing. So energies, I will think about the gravitational potential energy. I will think about my kinetic energy. There are no springs in there, and and this, and there is no friction. So I don't need to add uh, the work done by other forces, right? Because friction is is none. So that's it. So those are the energy involved. At point A, I do have kinetic energy, so I write. So you, you can you can set this as your ground level, the one with potential gravitational energy is zero. And if you do that, it, you could do down here too. It doesn't matter, but you can you can do at A again. Gravitational potential energy is always with respect to a level, and you can pretty much choose any level you you like. Um, you watch what you shouldn't forget is that if your mass is above that level is a positive gravitational potential energy difference and if it's below it's going to be a negative one so point a gravitational energy potential energy is zero point b is equal to m g times 1.6 mass is given and g is 9.8 so you know that now kinetic energy at point a is half m and the velocity or speed square you want to find, right? So we don't know the at point B is also half m v b, which we don't know either. The square. There are no others, and the the next thing you do, you just do your sum, and then in here you go half m v square, which you want to find. This is your unknown is equal mg times 1.6 plus half mv b squared. So m goes away, it's not an issue. So the point is I can't solve because I have only one equation and two unknowns. But where there is rotation, there is centripetal force, and then it's we haven't used yet the condition, the tension is pretty much gone at point B, which means at point B, the only force acting there is gravity, right? And therefore, since that is the only force, that is a net force, which means this is your centripetal force. So that Fg, let me write here in the corner, 
So Fg, which is Mg, is equal to m vb square vb square over r, which is 1.6. And then you can find your vb from here. So once you find the vb square, you plug it in here, and then you have your v. Uh, in the figure, a very small toy race car mass M is released from rest, blah, blah, blah. If it is released at height 2R, 2R, above the floor, how high is it above the floor when it leaves? Oh, that's cool. Neglecting friction. So there is no friction. Okay, this is very cool. That's a cool exercise. So, which means the car comes down and gets to a point somewhere here. Let's let's assume it's here, right? The car loses contact with the track and then and then goes on a free fall thing. So it has a speed. It has a speed here. It has a speed, but um, but what happened at that point? Well, if you do a free body diagram diagram of the car at that point when it's leaving the track which means the normal force which you which which you have in other situation is not there anymore so the only really acting force is gravity like in the previous exercise fg in, in fact um this is a good good exercise for project if you want to do logger pro and and film and 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 get a cart and a track, we could try to arrange that. This is a good one. This is a good one. Um, so what do you do? You go uh, point A, point B. See, the same mantra. It's always the same. You have your energies. Uh, there are no frictions, so there are only gravitational potential, energy, kinetic energy, right? So at point A, uh, release from rest. So uh, kinetic energy is zero. At point B, you have a kinetic energy half mvb squared. Looks like we, we have to do something similar to what we did before. And at A, with respect to the lower level right here, so this is my PEG equals zero, then um, mg to R, and then the point B, point B is mg, you know what? I'm gonna do something like this. This is pretty much R, and this is pretty much H. mg R plus H. I'm Kind of a separating in quantities, I know. So when when you add those two, then you have mg to r should be equal to mg r plus h plus half m v b square v b square. So your mg R is gonna one of your MGR will be canceled. So this is something you can solve. The problem is to figure um, exactly um, what is what is this point over here, right? So if you look at this uh, triangle over here, right? This is when the, the the mass is released. We have an angle theta right there, right? We have an angle theta and sine of theta sine of theta is equal to h over r so basically h is equal r sine theta now let me see if i can get anything else the other thing that i know is that um uh, at this point the only acting force is gravity which means um when you project gravity along the direction of rotation, that defines your that defines your centripetal force. Remember what centripetal force is again. Centripetal force is the net of all existing forces along the direction of rotation. In this case, 
uh, there is only one force Fg. So then let's project this force along the direction of rotation and, and get the work done. So uh, in other words, we want to project Fg project along the direction of rotation. It's called here radial. Uh, radial. Right? Is your centripetal force, which is n dB square over r. Okay, that's your centripetal force. But what is Fg radial? What is Fg projected along that direction of rotation? Uh, this angle is theta. This angle here, if you look at the triangle, is 90 minus theta, right? 90 minus theta. 90 minus theta. So Fg radial, Fg radial, it is Fg cosine of that angle, which is Fg sine of theta. Right, cosine of 90 minus theta is sine of theta, which is ng sine of theta. And this is your centripetal is your centripetal force in dB square over r. Now, uh, what is sine theta? So sine theta is this is a complicated problem. So sine theta is h over r. So we take this quantity, plug it in here, right? And then we can find your dB or write your dB as a function of R, of H, I mean. And then you can put it in here, right? And then you, you can solve your equation since you know everything there except H. Then you can find H. Uh, in the figure, you have a 700 uh, kilograms crate is in a rough surface surface uh, the angle is 30 degrees there is a, a external force applied horizontally um, the forces push the crate blah 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 the speeds change from here to there so you have some increase in speed which which means you can calculate your change in kinetic energy it, it, it's calling, it's saying, hey, now use work kinetic energy theorem. It's calling for that. So how much work does the gravity do on the crate during this process? Not again, not again. You don't need to use any of this crap here. So um, work done by gravity is what? Remember, what is the work done by gravity? In G, vertical displacement. Now, the vertical displacement here is, it's, it's, so if you take your final, your base level here, so your mass is moving from way above, way below to way above, right? So that is your displacement, it's a negative one. So the work done by gravity is negative. Mg vertical displacement is E sine of 30, and that's it, move on. Uh, in the figure, we have a block, five kilograms that moving with a certain speed, uh, frictionless, there is no friction, so the speed does not change. So the speed is going to be the same when the block touches the, the spring. After the block collides with the spring, the spring is compressed a maximum distance. So the maximum compressed distance is 0.68. You know there is a potential energy there. What is the speed of the block when it has moved so that the spring is compressed only half ooh, of the maximum distance? So half of the maximum distance at this point, right? At this point, so let's say point A is when it touched the spring, point B is ha half of that maximum distance, okay? So you point A's and B's, you just outline there, do your energy table, kinetic energy, point A, half, um, N, V square, right? Point B is half N, V, B square, which we want to find, right? What's the speed of the block? 
done with kinetic. How about gravitational potential energy? In both cases, the same. Now, I could give this problem. That's a good problem for an exam. Uh, that is exactly the same, except it is in a slope. So if it's in a slope, be careful. Um, you have to set your baselines and see where the block goes, like we did previously here. I could I could put a spring here, right? And this ex exo I, I could give this problem and bundle with the other one in exam, putting a spring there, and um, once the block touches the spring and move up, um, the spring is not only doing potential energy but also gravity is changing the gravitational potential energy but in this case flat it doesn't change so pe of the spring is the next one to consider at a the spring is not compressed yet so it's relaxed and what you got is zero at point b is half k um half of that compression is square half of that compression is square and the problem is done except Ooh la la, k is not given, right? Because see, when you add those quantities, sum, so you 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 have this part, a number, and in this part you have two unknowns. You have k and you have bb. So how can you solve for that? Well, we didn't use the condition that 0.68 is maximum compression, and that is half in ba square. So we have to do this again, is equal maximum compression, the block stops, so kinetic energy is zero, and and then and then this is what you got. Okay. In other words, uh, you can find k, plug a k in there, and have the problem solved. And that's it. And that's it.